Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So we need to have a talk about Tesla stock. This is a very serious discussion and a really important video. I'm sure most of you know that Tesla stock has been on an absolute tear over the last 12 months, almost up 750%. First of all, this is not normal for a stock. Second of all, this is unlikely to occur again in the following 12 months. Although it is possible, never say never. As most of you will know, I read all your comments and I've noticed recently a number of new entrants into Tesla stock. People that have heard about its crazy run and decided to jump on the bandwagon. People with large sums of cash considering investing all in one lump sum. People considering using margins, selling their house, selling their wife, selling their husband, selling their children, doing whatever it takes to buy Tesla stock at its current peak. Many others considering selling the stock at this crazy price and attempting to buy back in the future when the stock dips. In this video, I'd like to share a few words of caution, some of my thoughts around what may happen to Tesla stock over the short term, and some insights around the S&P 500 inclusion, which is probably going to be one of the most significant events, not just for Tesla stock, but for the stock market, period. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. That is an obnoxiously good return on your investment. I mean, really, deposit $100 and you'll end up with, at minimum, $21 worth of stocks, a 21% ROI on your money. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. First of all, a big congratulations to everyone who owns Tesla stock, especially to those of you who've never sold a share. I'd love to know in the comments below, when did you first begin buying Tesla stock and what is your average buy price for Tesla stock? And as a bonus, how many shares of Tesla stock do you own? Most of you will already know, I own a little over 5,000 shares of Tesla stock and have been buying since early 2016. And for the last three years, I've literally purchased nothing but Tesla stock with every spare cent. I'm also a very long-term investor and don't intend and won't need to sell any of my shares of Tesla stock before 2030. In fact, the reason that I'm accumulating wealth through Tesla shares isn't for my own personal needs, but for doing future philanthropy that is capital intensive. I tell you this to set the scene. I am a very long-term investor, which in my opinion is the actual only kind of investor. Everything else is gambling in my opinion, shorter time horizon, far greater risk, far less certainty around outcome, not investing, in my opinion. And that brings us to Tesla's historic inclusion in the S&P 500 index. Never before has a company anywhere close to the size of Tesla in terms of market capitalization been added to the S&P 500 index, all happening on a single day. Now, the reason that I explain this to you guys is just to set the scene for how unique this is. Nobody can know for sure what's likely to happen. However, a little bit of homework would have indicated that there was likely to be a run-up in Tesla stock price prior to inclusion, which we've seen. But to be honest, that run-up in price has been far above and beyond what I personally would have expected to happen at this stage. Of course, next week is an entirely different story. In the final days before the S&P 500 inclusion of Tesla stock, huge numbers of shares must be purchased by funds and those that track the S&P 500 index. This is going to produce a huge forcing function, potentially for the stock to run even further. But, and this is an enormous but. Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. Her butt, it's just so big. I can't believe it's just so round. I like um, yeah, so let's just pretend that didn't happen. The point that I'm making is that what goes up is probably going to come down to some degree. Now, I do not have a crystal ball, but I do have some common sense. Here's some of the reasons that I think this might happen. It's no secret that ahead of S&P 500 inclusion, typically a stock will gain and then give away some of those returns. This isn't news, and this means Many hedge funds, many short-term traders have actually been buying up Tesla stock ahead of inclusion, not because they believe in the company, but because they want to make a quick buck by flipping those shares to index funds that must buy the shares on the 21st of December or a few days prior. This is very important. If there's a lot of selling pressure ahead of the S&P 500 inclusion, we may actually see Tesla stock run up really hard, 
then fall back a little bit prior to the inclusion, then bounce again, then fall off a cliff. Now, again, I do not know what is going to happen. I do not have a crystal ball. I'm just trying to think through some of the likely outcomes here. My best guess, and this is all it is, is simply a guess, is that Tesla stock is going to pull back sometime before S&P 500 inclusion or soon after, or both. This is not to say that Tesla stock can't break through 700, 750, 800, 850. Who cares? Next week, anything could happen. It could literally go beyond $1,000 per share. I'm not saying it will, but this is a potential outcome. The point that I'm trying to make here is that I believe that the probability of Tesla stock coming back, giving away some of those gains that it's seen in the lead up to the S&P 500 inclusion is greater than 50%. Let's just say that next week Tesla stock reaches $750 per share in the lead up to the inclusion because of all of the buying pressure. Then shortly thereafter, People start selling off the stock, taking advantage of those short-term gains, etc. We start to see the stock pull back again. This is all hypothetical. Let's imagine that Tesla stock falls into the low 500s. What do you suspect that the panicky noobs who literally just heard of Tesla stock, thought stock can only go up, invested in Tesla stock literally at its peak, what do you think they're going to do when they start to see the stock falling? Now, if you don't have a good answer to this question, allow me to provide some insight. Earlier this year, when everyone thought the world was ending, I was making videos about how I didn't think the world was ending, everyone get over this, it wasn't that major, things were being disproportionately affected, blah, blah, blah. I saw so many geniuses in the comments, hundreds of people in the comments, explaining how they had sold their Tesla stock because the world was ending, nothing's ever going to be the same, they'll buy back after the dip, blah, 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 blah. How'd that work out, guys? Keep in mind that this was before Tesla stock had gone on an absolutely phenomenal run. It had certainly been running a little bit, but not even close to where it is today. This is important. There is a ton of brand new investors flocking to this stock who haven't engaged their brain whatsoever before buying. They just heard Tesla stock never goes down and bought. What do you think they're going to be doing if the stock starts shedding and they don't have an investment thesis, they don't have a long-term vision of the company, they don't have any idea what the future holds for this company whatsoever? Add to this the countless short-term traders who intend to sell around the peak S&P 500 inclusion and then buy back cheaper. I mean, most of these folks probably haven't factored in capital gains tax or the fact that anything could happen and maybe the stock won't pull back whatsoever. But hey, that's a discussion for another video. And then, of course, on the flip side, you've got all of the folks who will now see Tesla as legit legitimate stock because they're the kind of people who sit at home with their mouth open being spoon-fed their opinions on what stocks to own and Tesla can't make a profit has been all they've heard Tesla's going bankrupt etc for the last few years suddenly the S&P 500 inclusion legitimizes Tesla stock in the mind of these people given all the news coverage around the inclusion that's likely to happen in a week or two how many of these people might consider Tesla stock to be a viable investment and buy the stock for their own personal portfolios the point that I'm trying to make here is that next week is going to be extremely volatile for Tesla stock. I expect very high volumes on the stock, both buying and selling activity. And I have absolutely no idea what will happen. I have my suspicions, but I do not know. The only thing I can be sure of, it's going to be very volatile and unpredictable. Now, I want to be very clear here. I'm not giving any investment advice, and I literally don't know what's going to happen to Tesla stock. I just want to share some thoughts around what I think is likely and give people some insight because I know there's a lot of people who've literally just heard about Tesla stock or a lot of people who are thinking maybe they can make a quick buck trading around this volatility. You may. You may do very well trading this volatility. But my thinking is this. I own Tesla stock. I'm not planning on selling any because that introduces unnecessary risk and I don't need to and I don't want to be making a video laughing about myself selling Tesla stock thinking I was a genius who could buy it back cheaper, factoring in capital gains tax, etc. This is a possible outcome, but I'm not willing to introduce unnecessary risk when I believe in 2030 and beyond the company is going to be worth far more than it is today. It seems as though people have extremely distorted perspectives of both time and expected returns. I had a message recently, somebody was suggesting that a 30% per annum return over the next 10 years was really ordinary. Now, I was pretty savage in my response, literally saying there's something wrong with your brain if you think that's actually a poor return, and I mean it. Something has to be going wrong here for somebody to believe that's reasonable. But this is the distortion field we're living in with Tesla stock over the last 12 months. People have seen nothing but insane growth. So obviously stonks only go up and 30% per annum. Yeah, that's a terrible return. Somebody should let Peter Lynch or Warren Buffett know that, just, just saying. Over the long term, I still firmly believe that Tesla stock is headed to Mars, per my merch design. And by the way, thanks so much to everybody who supported the merch store and picked up one of these designs. Over 300 sold. But over the short term, 
anything could happen. I expect it to be a bumpy ride and I just want you guys to hear this now so that I don't get 4,000 comments in a few weeks with people panicking. Oh my God, my is so because I know they're gonna come anyway, but I just kinda wanna cut a few of them off before they happen. Just finally, we're gonna run through a little exercise, just a hypothetical imagining. What if? Look at the last 12 months of price history on Tesla stock and ask the question, what if? I was a typical buy and hold investor, had some money, bought the stock, it didn't sell any. Versus what if I was a short term trader who thought he had a time machine and could outsmart the market and decided to buy and sell actively on Tesla stock. Let's see how that would have panned out. So here we are looking at Tesla's stock price chart over the last 12 months. Phenomenal returns if you just held the stock up over 700%. Not bad, but of course, maybe you're a genius. Maybe you have a time machine. Maybe you can absolutely perfectly time the dips and just buy back in, that's brilliant. Let's have a look at one example. Let's say in August, the stock peaked at around $500, then collapsed by 33%. Now let's just say that you just happened to sell at the perfect time before the 33% drop. However, you have to pay capital gains tax, you have to factor that in. So you end up rebuying the stock 33% cheaper, but you've got less capital maybe two thirds as much as you initially had because you've made a lot of money, you need to pay capital gains tax. That means you're effectively in the same boat. You could have just held on to the stock and not paid tax and had the same value of shares after this dip. But of course, what about earlier in the year when everyone thought the world was ending? What a great opportunity. Stock was down 60%. But who would have had the timing, the inside and the time machine, be able to see into the future, etc., to know that this was the exact peak and this was the exact bottom. Unlikely that would be you. It's more likely that you sell somewhere around the peak. Oh, here we are, it's falling, I better sell now, I'm panicking, down 56%. But, obviously, you don't know the exact bottom of the market, so you stick in a little bit longer, oh, should I, I don't know, is it gonna drop even further? I don't know, I'm a little bit scared, what do I do? Oh, hang on, it's rising, it's rising, I better buy back in now. Fantastic, brilliant, look at this. Wow, I'm up 329% for the year. Well, not even a year, I'm a genius investor. But what about the investor that just held the entire time? Oh, 230 odd percent. Not bad without having to introduce unnecessary risk. I'm not here to have a go at short term trading. I think it can actually be very lucrative. But for my personal investment strategy, I don't like to introduce unnecessary risk and I don't like being wrong. I'd much rather invest with a high degree of confidence that over the long term, I'll be right, than invest with a low degree of confidence that over the short term, I might be right. But you do you. At the end of the day, I just wanted to put this video out there because I expect next week and the few weeks following are gonna be very volatile for Tesla stock. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.